Okay, may I have your attention, please? Um, I'm gonna beg for it. All right, um, dear colleagues, thanks for having me here today. Um, first of all, I would like to express my excitement towards this panel and thank the organizers for hosting such a remarkable session. Thank you very much. I'm Benjamin, I'm an archaeology student from the University of Warsaw and writing my thesis currently on the disappearance of Mehen. An ancient Egyptian board game which disappears in the late 3rd century uh, from the archaeological record. Now, as some of you might know, the play element in global humanity uh, has been since thousands of years materialized in boards, casting devices, pieces, and counters. Therefore, it is not since this century, but already since the late 19th and early 20th century, that uh, archaeology was trying to grasp the idea of gaming. Anyhow, since a couple of years now, and probably a rather reason for this session, our new approaches um, towards connecting archaeology with digital gaming, approaches like the Value Foundation's uh, Interactive Past or Reinhardt's Archaeogaming, approaches that admit that our world has changed in a playful way in the last decades and that archaeology must respond to these changes. However, I'm not here to repeat what my dear colleagues have already set in motion, but rather to ask the question, if we can connect general archaeological thought with gaming and its digital heritage, why not connect the study of ancient board games with game studies? Now, I have, you I have told you that I'm currently working on a thesis concerning an ancient board game, but guess what? It is exhaustingly difficult to make any meaningful sense out of a board game in its broader cultural context if all the reference you have is tied to its material and its dead players. Now, sure, some people might say, why not use the anthropological data from Huizinga to breathe some life into this matter? Yeah, don't get me wrong, his homoludens is a milestone, but many of his theories are dead as Dillinger, especially if you look at the latest developments in the academic field of game studies. So I thought for a moment, as game studies is an uh, internationally accepted field of research since almost two decades, why not apply its theories and concepts? Why not compare its cases with games that are dealt with in the study of ancient board games? Why not make sense out of the material with going digital or the other way around? And that's what we're going to do today. First, we'll need to ask it ourselves if this idea is so amazing, why has it not been applied so far? Well, therefore, we will talk about the actual barriers of connecting ancient and digital game studies. As the T and TAG stands for theoretical, we will then theoretically lift those barriers and start with the actual subject matter, namely linking those uh, separate fields. In order to do so, I have decided to present you the case of the Mahan board game in which I will apply concepts that were originally developed in the field of game studies. Afterwards, we will conclude, set the barriers back in place and discuss if this is after all just a theoretical wet dream or if this approach could result in some meaningful endorsement for these two academic fields. So let's start. For this to work, I would like you to understand the crucial differences between ancient board game studies and modern or digital game studies. Ancient board game studies is a field of academic interest, while game studies is an academic field by its own. Ancient board game studies emerged in the early 20th century, while the field of game studies emerged in the late 1990s. Also important, the scholars behind the study of ancient games were archaeologists, historians, and anthropologists, while the scholars behind, um, or the founding fathers of game studies were scholars mostly from media, film, and literature studies. It is important to stress out that modern game studies are not consecutive to ancient board game studies, and to remember the historical context in which these fields appear, as also which kind of academics had conceptualized uh, theories for those two fields. Coming now to the barriers. <clears throat> Science finds joy in drawing lines and segregating things. Segregating, uh, segregation creates order, and order helps to understand the object uh, of study. Unfortunately, it also fosters barriers. One barrier is the one of academia, or academic preference, which is quite trivial. I mean, how am I supposed to expect from my thesis supervisor, who is an expert in Egyptian archaeology, to know anything about Espen Arset's latest research in studying digital games as spatial representation? To stay fair, how am I expect from him to know anything about the earliest material evidence of card games? It is the 14th century, by the way. 
We're looking here at different academic backgrounds with different ideas, methods, and especially different perspectives when it comes to the choice of literature to consult for one's research. The other barrier is one of comparison. It is quite difficult to find any common ground between the latest Call of Duty and the Viking game Tuffle, right? And even though it might seem to us in this room anyway like a bad, ex uh, bad comparison in the first place, keep in mind the previous barrier and you have an idea how other colleagues who have no experience with gaming might look at this attempt. Nevertheless, if any of you guys recently played Death Stranding or similar games, you might know that today digital games seem to blow up all boundaries of traditional games and make it quite complicated, also maybe in the future, to find common ground. Still, comparisons can be found, but their academic justification, nah, that's a different thing. The last barrier is the one of speculation. The ontologies of games are a mystery to everyone who has ever dealt with them. It is a real paradox. Huh? You study games with all of your might, and at the end of the day, it seems that a random kid on the street can define what a game really is more convincing than yourself. <laughs> Looking at the countless definition and proposed properties, it can be said that the ontologies of digital as also ancient or analog games are still a black box. Therefore, trying to cross-sect between analog and digital games could also mean to speculate. Anyhow, <clears throat> As this is a theoretical conference, let's theoretically lift the first two boundaries and transform the last barrier in a mere warning to us. So how can we combine ancient board game studies with game studies? With interchanging definitions. So we take a defi definition that was conceptualized for game studies and we see if we can apply it on an ancient board game. For that, let's use Stefan Günzel's concept of exemplification in order to make sense out of the Mahan board game. Günzel's concept of exemplification is quite simple. He regards games as an exemplification of spatial and philosophical concepts. He, for example, describes the game Max Payne 2, The Fall of Max Payne, as an exemplification of Karl Jasper's concept of hortoscopy. He writes in a recent article, quote, The patient hereby does not only view him or herself outside, but still has the bodily sensation of the first person. This worst of, uh, uh, of all out-of-body or doppelganger phenomena is neither caused by this game, nor can it be fully simulated. Nevertheless, it exemplifies the typical schizoid spatial structure of this form of perception. The subject here is the empirical matter of experience and at the same time, the transcendental precondition of perception as such." End quote. Simply, Günzel's idea is that games do not just represent a spatial or philosophical concept, but they exemplify it. Now, the Mahan game is the oldest preserved board game in the global archaeological record. Its rules are obscure, but according to comparisons to other games and logical deductions to its game design, one can say that it was a multiplayer race game with strategic elements. Anyhow, research has established that it had a quite heavy religious connotation. It was apparently part of royal ritualistic activity and served in inscription, wall painting, and material culture as a kind of companion to a mythological aspect of ancient Egyptian religion. So archaeological scholars agree on the idea that the game resembled the journey of the sun god Ra, who traverses at night through the underworld and resurfaces at the end again. This journey bears great dangers, and therefore Mehen, which means translated the coiled one, is the name of the divine serpent who protects the sun god on his journey. Um, coming back to Günzel's concept, we can say that Mahan is an exemplification of a mythological story which is spatialized through its core attribute, the serpent. So assuming my thesis supervisor would read any publications on game studies, I would be allowed to use Günzel's term of exemplification in order to reconceptualize an interpretation of the game Mahan. All right, stay put, I got one more for you. <laughs> it might be the Urvater of game studies uh, theories, uh, definitions, namely <laughs> R sets ergodic literature. In ergodic literature, non-trivial effort is required to allow the reader to traverse text, end quote. Playing Assassin's Creed is ergodic because I need to work myself through the game and it's also non-linear as I can encounter the story in various ways. Reading a book is non-ergodic as it affords the trivial effort of encountering the content through reading linearly, sentence by sentence, page by page. <clears throat> If the Mahan board game is an exemplification of a mythological concept, can I treat it as ergodic literature? 
Yes, I can. We need to work ourselves through the game in order to traverse through the journey of the sun god. Is it non-linear? Yes, the score of the game is not binary, and as it was placed with custom devices, the exact movement of game pieces and the encounters or circumstances that it would create are technically almost infinite to its players. To sum up, we used the archaeological and Egyptological data on the Mahan board game, which indicated the essential context. In order to use a more specific concept to describe the circumstance, we took Gunther's idea of exemplification, which enabled us to even put art and ergodic literature on top. All right, but how solid and useful is our interpretation? In this case, only if we assume that the game was used in a religi religious context. If it, if it has no religious meaning, it is no exemplification of a mythological story, and therefore no ergodic literature, as the game does not provide a narrative that the players can work themselves through. And amazingly enough, this is, can be exemplified through Cypriotic Mahan board, boards. These boards appear astonishingly more numerous over there and have absolutely no relig religious context. The Mahan board game was shipped over there, someone in the third millen uh, millennium BC from the Levant through merchants, and as the ancient Cypriots had not much of a chit-chat with the Egyptians at that time, they never really got a hang on the idea of the Mahan board, so it was played as a playing game of leisure. Ergo, in this case, applying the theories of game studies would also depend on how the board game was culturally situated and understood in terms of meaning by its players. I hope you could follow me as it was quite difficult to make this idea work in less than 20 minutes. But to conclude, yes, with careful consideration, we can apply game studies uh, concepts on the study of ancient board games to create novel interpretation. The archaeological context offers us an idea how a game was understood back then and, and, and enables us then to place logically arguments from the field of game studies on top of that. This works also perfectly the other way around. Unfortunately, I have no time to do that, but please approach me after the presentation. The, the main issue that will stay, though, is the barrier of academia. In order to somehow ease this pain, I thought of something similar to an open source interdisciplinary database in which ancient game and digital game scholars can share theories and concepts in order to forward their research in creative ways, linking old with new and material with the digital. I used the open source wiki fandom to get this idea online. Having this all linked up in a wiki makes it easier for me, at least, to do creative research with old material and to look between the boundaries of two different academic fields they are technically talking about one and the same thing, namely games. To think, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to finish up, I think that good research always happens at the interface of different academic fields. And I think that game studies has a lot to offer to the study of ancient games as also the other way around. And it might even stimulate archeologists to re-evaluate the often overlooked playful material in their storage rooms that can be meaningfully interpreted with the help of modern game studies. On the other hand, it might be also a chance for digital game scholars to ground their research on archaeological material and get inspired. Last but not least, I know this whole idea may seem a bit like playing around, but when you're researching games, playing around might be just the right name of the game. Thank you very much. <laughs>